the one that, that really uh, hurt us inside. You know, that's something that we wanted to do going into the game. All right, big fella. Congratulations. Thanks for stopping by. Chris Fowler, Joe Smith is a legit 6'9", and he's got <laughs> game to burn. We talked about him last night, Clark. I know Clark thinks he's ready right now for the NBA. He can easily make that transition. The following is an exclusive presentation of Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports. There are big games in college basketball, then there are big games. Tonight we have one of the latter with a few essential ingredients. First, you need a couple of top-ranked teams. Carolina's number one, Maryland number ten. Sprinkle in two big-name coaches, the Tar Heels' Dean Smith, one of the most successful coaches of all times, and the Terps' Gary Williams, who has brought back that winning tradition to College Park. A big game also has a lot at stake. North Carolina's number one in the ACC, while Maryland is number two with losses at Chapel Hill and at Georgia Tech on Saturday. A big game has emotion, a kind of electricity in the air from the players and the fans. All eyes are on College Park as Cole Fieldhouse gets ready for the biggest game of the year. and Jefferson Pilot Sports present the best in college basketball, the Atlantic Coast Conference. Today's game is brought to you by Continental Airlines, by Nations Bank, by Nationwide Insurance, by MCI, and by Bud Light. The Maryland Terrapins have not lost in Cold Field House yet this year. North Carolina comes to College Park with a record of 18 and 1. The Maryland Terrapins 17 and 4. And hello again, everybody. I'm Tim Brand along with Dan Bonner. This is definitely one of the most important games in the ACC thus far this season. Maryland and North Carolina. And I know that when you talk about matchups, Dan, you like to look at the big guys first, Rasheed Wallace and Joe Smith. These are two of the best starting fives in the country, and you got to start inside. Maryland's big guy, of course, he's known now as sophomore sensation Joe Smith, but his counterpart in North Carolina, Rasheed Wallace, you can see how important they are to their teams. The last game between these two teams, Joe Smith got in foul trouble. Rots right here as he picks up foul number three. That was in the first half. Then here's foul number four, and what you note about both of those both of those fouls committed out beyond the free throw line. Tim, I'll tell you what, neither Rasheed Wallace nor Joe Smith can afford to pick up any stupid fouls tonight. I think it's interesting. You also think a key matchup is in the backcourt between McGinnis and Simpkins. Absolutely. I think the point guards are essential to these teams. Jeff McGinnis ran the North Carolina team like a fine race car in the last game. Had a big game against Maryland. Dwayne Simpkins, on the other hand, struggled against North Carolina. And I think when you combine Dwayne Simpkins struggling, Joe Smith in foul trouble, it's not surprising that Maryland lost the game. This place is rocking. Carolina, Maryland, coming up next. Fieldhouse here this evening. Two of the best shooting teams in the ACC and in the country. Stackhouse averages 21 points. Wallace, 18 points. You see their percentages. Dean Smith's teams always shoot well from the field. 22 of his last 24 teams have shot 50% or better. Look at Gary Williams, 1968 grad of this university. 96 wins since he's come back to coach at Maryland. Hip, Booth, Joe Smith, obviously the key. 20 points, 10 rebounds a game. Simpkins and Rhodes. We'll have the opening tip after this message from Bud Light. Finding their seats, 15,000 fans. It's been sold out for a year. Maryland 12-0 at home this season. And this is one of the best crowds in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Well, we're just about set. North Carolina 18-1, Maryland 17-4. North Carolina leads the series big. Maryland has not beaten the Tar Heels since March 1st, 1992. Donald Williams and Big Joe Smith. Tim, both of these teams have lots of weapons. They can come at you from a lot of different angles. All 
10 players in the game right now average double figures. Tim Higgins is the referee. Andre Patillo and Mike Wood, the other officials. Maryland has it first. X-ray hip in the paint to boot. Blocked away, and here come the Tar Heels. I suspect both teams will be a little bit tight early. Maryland in a man-to-man -man defense dressed in white. Inside the Wallace. Taken away by Smith. That's an excellent job by Keith Booth to come down and help out. You don't want Joe Smith matched up one-on-one -on -one against Rasheed Wallace in there. Turnover number one, and Maryland makes some bad. x three Hill. Stackhouse and Booth going at one another as well. There's, there's five great individual matchups out here. Smith blocks Wallace. Wallace may have hurt himself. Came down funny on his ankle. Looks like he turned his ankle a little bit, but in a game like this, you do exactly what Rasheed Wallace is doing right now. You lace him up a little tighter and go back after it. Wallace right there came down on Johnny Rhodes' foot, and you notice on that play, Tim, Johnny Rhodes rotated down against Rasheed Wallace. If Wallace recognizes that, that means somebody outside, Donald Williams or Dante Calabria, dangerous three-point shooters, are going to be wide open. Tar Heels lead the ACC in three-point shooting, lead the nation. Just underway. Haven't even played a full minute yet. Maryland leads two to nothing. Donald Williams beyond the arc. Keith Luke can handle for a big guy. X-ray hip is matched up inside against Dante Calabria. Boy, Rasheed Wallace clears hip out of there. Turnover number one for Maryland. Dwayne Simpkins thought Johnny Rhodes was going to come to the ball, and Rhodes was open. He didn't realize that he turned away from the ball. Maryland tells Dwayne Simpkins just to do his job, put the Terps in the offense, distribute the ball, and here's another turnover. To him. <laughs> Terps up by four. One of the most important things for Simpkins to do defensively is to prevent penetration by McGinnis. Stackhouse got lost, had a back door, they didn't see him. This is McGinnis for three. One point game. Johnny Rhodes. Oh, great pass. Smith. Offensive. Johnny Rhodes posting up inside, finds Joe Smith. Joe Smith jumps to the basket. And Gary, Rasheed Wallace is down. And Gary Williams just got a technical. Gary Williams went crazy on that ball, and he just got a technical. Joe Smith just cleaned Rasheed Wallace out in there. What a job Dean Smith has done this year. 820 wins over his 34 years at UNC, but with a lack of depth, he has been coaching tremendously. Here's Gary Williams. His complaint is that Joe Smith was in the air, and you can't come under him. Williams makes it the tie at four. a 61% free throw shooter makes them both. Carolina has its first lead as they work with Rasheed Wallace on the Carolina bench. He took that full brunt of Joe Smith and went down hard. Nice pass. Jump stop. And Joe Smith with the rebound. Simpkins trying to force him a little bit right there with the lob to X-ray hip. Didn't go. That's two turnovers by Dwayne Simpkins. It's Calabria handling it for the first time. Pass to Zwicker. This foul is on Booth. 
Tim, one of the big problems that the Maryland defense had in the game down in Chapel Hill was that they allowed North Carolina to penetrate with the dribble. That time, they didn't do a good job helping out on the screen. Calabria was able to get inside. That is the first on Booth. And the second team foul on Maryland. You get a look there at Serge Wicker. Everybody talks about North Carolina being a little thin, and yes, they are. But they've been able to get positive contributions from the guys off their bench, and Zwicker scores the first bench point for either team. Zwicker has now hit 9 out of 16 shots at the free throw line this year. 53 percent makes them both. 7 foot 2 out of the Netherlands. 7 straight North Carolina points. It's 7 4 with 17 33 to go in the first half. North Carolina, very, very explosive team. Runs characterize what they do offensively. It's important that Maryland not let them off on long runs. Wallace back in the game, and he has the rebound. Out to Donald Williams. Tar Heels are running. Last touch by Maryland. It'll be Carolina ball. Gary Williams is still mad. <laughs> <laughs> John Wood and Gary Williams still going after it. Those two hooked up for a technical early on. Gary making the call on the sidelines. Well, it just so happened that time he was right. Maryland has four turnovers, North Carolina two. And that's one thing that Maryland really can't do in a basketball game like this. They have got to take advantage of the opportunities that present themselves. They really can't force the play. X three hip misses the three. Been in a little bit of a slump. Didn't score at all against Virginia. Had 14 against Georgia Tech. That's good defense that time by Simpkins. Forced a very, very tough shot. Now here's where Simpkins has to be in control, though, Tim. He's got to get the team into the offense. Joe Smith. Loses it out of bounds. He can't save it. Knocks it off Wallace, who makes a great catch and starts the transition. Here's Calabria from beyond the arc, and it's good. 57% shooter from behind the three-point line. You simply cannot allow him to shoot the ball unmolested. It's a 10-0 Tar Heel run. Smith. That's where they need to go with the ball, Tim. I don't think Rasheed Wallace is going to be overly aggressive. And in fact, Wallace appears to be struggling coming up and down the court. Stackhouse almost walked, had to turn it over. Simpkins, the other end. It's a two-point game. Hip matched up against Donald Williams, Keith Booth against Stackhouse. This is Simpkins. We're tied. One of the reasons that these teams shoot the ball so well is they use their defense to create turnovers and get easy baskets. Maryland now on a 6 0 run. Stackhouse for three. <laughs> Boy, is he nice. Jerry Stackhouse averages 21 points a game. He's having a great season. Double figures almost every game. Virginia held him to eight points, but that was unusual. He can dominate. A great catch by Joe Smith. It's obvious that Rasheed Wallace is going to pick and choose which balls he goes after in there. Running one-hander by McGinnis. Just like that, the Tar Heels go up by five. Two top scoring teams in the ACC. They can put an awful lot of points on the board. This will be on Wallace. That's his first. First team foul. Tim, we talked before the game about how important each of these guys are to their ball club. The foul on Wallace is called when he moves his hip into Joe Smith. Joe Smith. As excited as the crowd. Now, this is something North Carolina has been very successful with this year, keeping opponents off the free throw line. 
Lucas and Bristol coming into the ball game at the line is Smith. And Joe needs two for a thousand. There's one of them. 999 for Joe Smith. National freshman of the year, consensus last year. Would not be a bad choice for national player of the year this year based on the season this he's had. And now gets those thousand points. Joe becomes the fastest player in Maryland history to get 1,000 points and 500 rebounds. Brought to you in part by Lincoln Mercury. Joe Smith just reached the 1,000 point mark in Maryland. It's the quickest Terp to reach 1,000 points and 500 rebounds. Here's McGinnis. It's a 15 to 12 game. Wallace with the jump hook. Great extension in the finger roll makes it 17 to 12. McGinnis did a great job getting the ball to Rasheed Wallace. Kabarik in the game, Bristol in the game for Maryland. This is Rhodes. They double on him. Smith left alone beyond the arc. Not even close. get there looking expectantly at the official the rule is you have to have both feet on the floor facing the dribbler then you're allowed to move to stay in the dribbler's path but Kavarik never established position take it in the torso so Kavarik picks up his first it's the third team foul it is a non-shooting foul so North Carolina will have the ball out underneath you know we mentioned Maryland with a couple of substitutes in the game and in a game like this the bench even though their contributions may be small, Tim, they may be very, very important. Bristol had his career game against North Carolina down at Chapel Hill. This is McGinnis, nice move into the paint. Mario Lucas also in the game for Maryland, so the Terps with almost their entire bench in the game. Stackhouse over Lucas, Smith with the rebound. Great block out by Joe Smith. Great player, second rebound. <laughs> Carolina matched up in the man-to-man. -man. Oh, great cut by Rhodes! Rhodes puts it back! His first bucket! Johnny Rhodes, one of the best rebounders at guard in the ACC. Calabria walks on that play. Dante Calabria, deadly from three-point range, didn't get himself set that time. Each team now with five turnovers. 4 to go in the first half. It's a three-point Carolina lead. Coming up at halftime, stay tuned for the Continental Airlines Fast Takes Contest, and it's brought to you by Continental, the official airline of the ACC. Pierce Landry checks in now for Carolina. Each coach going to his bench early. Now he's got a foul inside against Swicker, hanging on to Joe Smith. That's Swicker's first. Now, this is a very bold play by Maryland here. Swicker's grabbing onto Joe Smith, but they're trying to lob to Keith Booth over top of Rasheed Wallace. Booth. Smith tried to tip. Delivery at the other end. And Gary Williams up telling Dwayne Simpkins, you got to think about defensive balance. It's a five-point game. Tar Heels have led most of the way thus far. Next three hip on the baseline. Shot clock has not been a factor this far. Down to 10 now. Simpkins checks it. Seven on the shot clock. Oh, and that kick by McGinnis will reset the shot clock at 35. That's an excellent double team by North Carolina. Simpkins was actually stumbling backwards. So that's a break for Maryland. Johnny Rhodes checks back into the ball game for Bristol. So the starting lineup back in for Maryland. Rhodes, Booth, Simpkins, Hip, and Smith. You can see from that graphic right there, North Carolina's got it going in the transition early, and they are very dangerous when they're able to do that. Great first step by Rhodes. Back out 
to Landry for three. You know, we talked about bench contributions. North Carolina has five points from their bench. The Tar Heels, four of five from three-point range. Carolina, the best three-point shooting team in the country. North Carolina now in a zone. This is hip. And Landry will be called, or was it Zwicker? Foul's called against Landry. You know, X-ray hip had the open shot from the foul line and elected to take it into those two seven-footers. Penetration will kill you every time. Johnny Rose gets it inside. Joe Smith gets it in the basket. We'll be back after this message from Bud Light. A lot of threes this year. 17 trades against Florida State. Jerry Stackhouse has one of those three-point shots. Interestingly, Maryland has four more shots than North Carolina, but when you make four out of five from three-point range, that certainly helps. Carolina goes to a zone. We've seen the Tar Heels go to more zone this year by necessity because of the lack of depth. This is Booth. Boy, Maryland's missed a lot of shots close to the basket, Tim. They're getting good looks. Booth is 0 for 5. Well, they're close looks. I don't know that they're easy looks. There's some pretty big guys in there defending. Calabria. Oh. Here comes Simpkins. Numbers aren't there for Maryland. Hip goes beyond the arc. Joe Smith kept that one alive. Maryland's not shooting well in the first half. North Carolina back to the man-to-man -man defense. Terps are 7 for 19 from the field. Rose takes it in. Smith. Jump ball. Possession arrow belongs to the Tar Heels. Johnny Rose created a difficult situation for Joe Smith that time. Smith had Swicker on his back, but Rose elected to take the ball in the middle then try to pass it back to Joe Smith. And that was, I think, the wrong decision by Johnny Rose. This has been one heck of a roll for the Carolina Tar Heels. Tar Heels are riding a nine-game win streak. If you look at Rashid, he's still limping a little bit. Clemson gave the Tar Heels some problems, but they were patient. They won big. UNC handed uh, Virginia its first loss in the conference. Tough win against Virginia Tech at Greensboro. Last second win at Wake. Double OT at Duke. Payback Saturday night against North Carolina State. Great run right now by the Tar Heels. Nine in a row. Under 10 minutes to play. And Rasheed goes down again. I'm not sure what that was, but he screamed in pain. That's that same ankle. There's Maryland missing another one. You notice Rasheed gets the ankle back pretty quick when he goes on off. <laughs> Stackhouse is fouled. And Stackhouse better be careful. He doesn't want to get the technical foul. Joe Smith battling Rasheed Wallace for the basketball. We talked about Joe Smith needing to be careful, not drawing a foul out by half court. There you can see he just steps on the back of Rasheed Wallace's heel, and Rasheed turns his ankle. That's the second on Booth. He's also 0 for 5 from the field. Maryland has missed 11 of its last 13 shots. And that last miss was at from point blank range. Look at Andrew. The North Carolina bench has contributed seven points in this first half, Tim. Point Carolina lead. It's the biggest thus far in the game. Here's Booth, offensive. That's three on Booth. He just lowered his shoulder in there and bowled over Pierce Landry. You could hardly call that anything else. But Maryland really frustrated on offense. Talking about the North Carolina bench, their starters score 87% of the points with the bench with a significant contribution in the first half. 9.08 to go in the first half. Carolina by eight. 
when we asked two-time Indy winner Emerson Fittipaldi to be involved in the development of the Chrysler Cirrus, it wasn't to have him help sell the car. It was to have him help refine it. He pushed it to the limits around the track. He made suggestions. The engineers listened. The engineers made suggestions, and he listened. The result of this collaboration is a specially modified double wishbone suspension system unlike any other on the road today. The Chrysler Cirrus, Motor Trend's car of the year. It's not just a step above. It's the new plateau. You know, Tim Maryland really struggling offensively in their last 16 possessions. They've scored only six points. Carolina breaks the traffic press very easily. And with Keith Booth on the bench now with three personal fouls, Mario Lucas going to be extremely important. And Jerry Stackhouse hits that three over Mario Lucas. That's now two three-point baskets converted by Stackhouse. And North Carolina leads by 11. It's Carolina's largest lead. They're five of six from beyond the arc. And Carolina gets it back. Williams knocks it away from Rhodes. Maryland really struggling right at the moment. Williams, yes. And one of the reasons that this is the number one team in the country is North Carolina just has this killer instinct. They, they know that Maryland is struggling, and they've gone on an 11-0 run. Carolina is on fire. Six of seven from beyond the arc. We'll be back after this from Budweiser. That its opponents in trouble goes to the three-point basket once again. Here, Jerry Stackhouse hits the three over Lucas. And then in the transition, Donald Williams with the fake. The defender flies by, and he drills the three. One of the problems, Tim, for Maryland, if you can't score on the offensive end, the other team is able to get the ball down sometimes on fast breaks and pretty good scoring opportunities. And that's really what's happened to Maryland. They can't get the ball to go in the basket. Joe Smith has six points. Simpkins has four. And now add three more for Dwayne Simpkins. That was big. But still, North Carolina back quickly into the offensive end. Maryland scrambling to get organized on defense. Carolina's taking the crowd out of this game. We talked about North Carolina in transition. Fast break points in 17 to 6 in favor of the Tar Heels. Maryland Williams. doing a pretty good job in the half-court defense. Williams checks the shot clock, sees it's at 8. He penetrates down the lane and scores. Extra hip just wasn't able to stay with him for the entire length of the shot clock. Dangerous pass to Simpkins. Wayne Simpkins coming up big here when they need it most. He now has nine. Smith has six. Hip has four. And that's it. Now for the Maryland Terrapins, they're going to have to tighten things up on the defensive end of the court. Maryland had perhaps its worst defensive effort this season against Tech this past weekend, in the second half especially. Carolina ball with 6.53 to go in the half. Stay tuned at halftime when Dick Vitale presents the Direct TV Dish Out the Winner sweepstakes. That's coming up at halftime. Yes, a Cavish is in the game. Johnny Rhodes out. Gary Williams talking to Rhodes over on the bench. Yes, a Cavish is a three-point shooter. This is McGinnis. Simpkins, big rebound. Pushes it hard at the other end. That wasn't a good decision by Simpkins, by Dwayne Simpkins right there. He did a nice job getting the ball down. Nice pass to Wallace. And the result of that is you miss a shot in transition. North Carolina is able to go get an easy shot in transition. Maryland's offensive woes are contributing to their defensive problems, Tim. last time Joe Smith took a shot. Well, they take it away from him. They double down, knock it. Here goes the transition to Stackhouse. That's a break for Maryland because Stackhouse had beaten everybody down the court. Here's Joe Smith. Nice job by Wallace. Hit this foul. the transition Joe Smith has to come over to help there's the penetration that we're talking about nobody around Rashid Wallace as he dunks it home 
The foul was called on Donald Williams. That's his first. Wicker comes into the game for Carolina, and Landry comes in. Williams and Stackhouse will get a breather. At the line will be X3 Hip. Hip is a 64% free throw shooter. He's hit 61 of his 95 attempts this year. Hip, Rhodes, and Booth only have six points among them. Tim, a combined three for 12 from the field. But what a player he is. Stackhouse, extra hip, not bad. But, you know, we've got, if they elect to come out into the NBA draft, Rasheed Wallace, Jerry Stackhouse, and Joe Smith, in some order, could be one, two, three in the NBA draft. Hip makes them both. He goes out of the ballgame. Johnny Rhodes checks in with 5.55 to go in the first half. Carolina by 11.
to go first half. You see the Maryland scoring run, Tim, and they started getting the ball to go in the basket. Stop turning it over, although they just turned it over on this last possession. Yes, the Kavish is really playing the right hand of Calabria. Forcing him left. Calabria can go that way. Out the stack out. Boy, Joe Smith is getting every rebound, Tim. Eight rebounds for Smith. Great pass. Throws. And one. Tim, these were the shots that Maryland was missing early in the game. Johnny Rhodes showing you some power inside. Quickness to get down the court. Great pass by Yessa Cavish. Steps under the basket to avoid stack. Hit the last eight points for Maryland. Smith goes out of the ball game. Rose, a 74% free throw shooter, converts the three-point play. 36-35 Tar Heels. 19-6 run by Maryland. Jessica Vich is laughing. the first. He has been the leader in free throw attempts most of the year in the Atlantic Coast Conference. See what Mario Lucas has done off the bench. That's been impressive. But how about Stackhouse? Gone to the line 157 times. Jerry Stackhouse simply attacks the basket. And when you're going to attack the basket, Tim, you're going to draw some fouls. There's about a 10-second difference, 11 seconds, between the shot clock and the game clock. 
Shot clock is at 20. Simpkins beyond the arc. ACC action is brought to you by Nationwide Insurance, by Plymouth Neon, by Central Fidelity Bank, by BP Oil, and by Right Guard. What a first half. It was a battle. It was a first half of runs. Maryland led 4-0, but then Carolina went on a terrific run. 17 fast break points. They were 6 of 7 beyond the arc. But then Maryland went on a run. They hit four straight three-pointers. Johnny Rhodes hit 11 straight points for the Maryland Terrapins. And at halftime, it's a one-point ball game. Carolina led by as many as 14. While we have a chance, let's introduce you to the Scholar Athlete of the Week. This week's ACC Scholar Athlete is nothing. Then Carolina went on a tear, had a 14-point lead. And at halftime, it's a one-point game after Johnny Rhodes caught fire and hit 11 straight points for the Maryland Terrapins in a 23-6 run. Scoreboard some of the other scores around the country. Rutgers hoops and vote on the team you think will capture the ACC regular season title. The contest winner will be selected from all correct entries based on a random drawing and will receive a VIP trip for two to the 1995 Direct TV Grade 8 tournament at the Palace in Auburn Hills. Voting ends February 11th. The winner will be announced during our ACC tournament coverage in March. Take a look at the ACC standings. This game's so big because Maryland's loss to Georgia Tech over the weekend put them one full game behind the Tar Heels. Duke still looking for its first win. Virginia, a very strong 6-3 and three, along with Georgia Tech, lurking right behind the Terrapins and the Tar Heels. Atlanta Coast Conference basketball on the Ray Common Jefferson Pilot Sports Network. We'll continue after these messages from your local ACC station. Smart play of the week comes from last Saturday's Georgia Tech upset of fifth-ranked Maryland. On this play, Tech's Travis Best proves why he's one of the best point cards in the nation. Best is trapped on the baseline by the double team, but somehow spots Eddie Alisma and hits him with a behind-the-back pass, and Alisma banks the shot home. Another look shows that Best only caught a glimpse of Alisma, but put the ball right in his hands for the assist. And that's our Advanced Auto Parts Smart Play of the Week. Statisticians here at Cole Fieldhouse will tell you Maryland is 16-1 when leading at the half. Tim Brandt and Dan Bonner, Dan, talk about some of the statistics that we saw in the first half. Well, it was really a bizarre first half. You mentioned the runs, Tim. You can see the teams, the shooting just about even. North Carolina hit six of their first seven three-point shots. They cooled off. Maryland missed their first six. 
or excuse me, their first five, so they got hot as the half went on. The free throws about even Maryland dominating the boards. North Carolina doing a nice job getting out on the fast break. Neither team dominating in the turnover department. We're just about set for the second half, and we'll be back after this from right guard. Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of ACC basketball is brought to you by Budweiser, by Ford Contour, by Discus Athletic, by Direct TV, by Continental Airlines, and by Food Lion. Maryland leading North Carolina by a point, 39-38. We're set to begin the second half. Before we do that, take a look at our game plan. Rashid Wallace only has three shots in the first half. North Carolina relying a lot on the perimeter. They've got to get inside. They've got to do a better job rebounding the basketball. Maryland has to limit the North Carolina transition opportunities, and they have to get out and defend the three. And that's easier said than done, Tim, because you defend that three, you give up the penetration. See the scoring leaders from the first half. Rhodes finished strongly. Carolina 18 and 1, ranked number one in the country. Maryland 17 and 4, ranked as high as number eight. Keith Booth sat out 11 minutes in the first half with foul trouble. Simpkins off balance, the penetration, and he scores. Simpkins now in double figures with 11. The Maryland backcourt. Simpkins and Rhodes playing very, very well. Simpkins had 24 against sports attack. Gets it away. Stacked out. Nice dish. Wallace. Tough shot by Wallace, but he is a special player. He leads the ACC in field goal percentage. Third in blocks, fourth in rebounds, seven double doubles. He's outstanding. And Maryland brings Joe Smith out to the top. They're able to post up inside with some players. Johnny Rhodes, X3 hip. Rhodes, no bucket before the shot. Rhodes has an inch or so on Donald Williams on the inside. x ray Hip has a couple of inches on Dante Calabria. Two fouls now on Donald Williams. We talked about the point guards and how important they were to each team. You can see Dwayne Simpkins with the better of it. There's Keith Boo's first bucket of the night. As we said, he sat out an awful long time in the first half with foul trouble. He's now one for six from the field. Terrapins by three. But Dwayne Simpkins thus far has done an outstanding job on the offensive end, but particularly on the defensive end, where he has prevented that easy penetration by McGinnis. Wallace left alone and he scores. Anytime that Joe Smith has to go and help out against penetration, Rasheed Wallace is going to have an easy shot opportunity. Wallace now with eight points. Joe Smith.
after that play, though. Great ball handling. Joe Smith was actually out trying to help Dwayne Simpkins double team McGinnis, but they couldn't get him surrounded. You know, the coaches feel he's making good decisions. His defense has stepped up. His ball handling all very strong. Oh. Luke just hasn't had much luck inside. McGinnis has a trip by Rhodes. Rhodes tries to push it hard. He's fouled. continuation of college basketball although the crowd wanted it no bucket that'll be the third team foul on Carolina Donald Williams picks up his third Maryland stays in that zone
to be Carolina basketball. You mentioned Maryland trailing by 14. Since that time, the Terrapins have outscored North Carolina 38 to 14. Simpkins working on McGinnis. Simpkins just doing a great job denying McGinnis penetration to the basket. Johnny Rhodes almost had the steal and almost had Dan Bonner. Good defense, Dan. Now somebody's got to tell Johnny, I have three children and a wife. I can't afford this kind of injury. Merrill's defense really has turned it up, and I think Dwayne Simpkins has been the key. Jeff McGinnis simply cannot get penetration to the basket. as the horn didn't go off. North Carolina claiming the ball hit the rim. And Maryland saying it was an air ball. No, I think the ball hit the rim. I think so, too. And Dean certainly agrees. <laughs> hey, it's time to play fast takes. Identify the player that appeared in the Continental Airlines halftime feature. Call 1-800-836-3ACC. It's 24 hours to enter. Your secret code is 75. Shot clock reset. Terrapins by 10. Old Fieldhouse is rocking. Man-to-man -man defense. Shot clock at 8. Wallace is last to touch it. been the Maryland defense. They simply have not allowed North Carolina to get the ball in easy scoring position. Jerry Stackhouse with a bandage on that chin back in the game. Down to Rhodes. Joe Smith comes up with it. Yes, it can be. Yes, the Cavs just took the ball in there. Made a nice move, but when you get in the lane and Rasheed Wallace is standing in front of you, it's a bit of a problem. Landry down the other end. Carolina tried to catch the Terra from sleeping and almost did. McGinnis in the lane. Kicks it out. This is Landry. But Simpkins doing a great job preventing McGinnis from taking the ball where McGinnis wants to take it in North Carolina might want to think about getting some screens up high for McGinnis. North Carolina's missed seven three-pointers now. Tara missed a great opportunity there. That looked like the Maryland of early in the basketball game, Tim. Calabria for three, yes. And early in this game, Maryland would miss those easy shots. North Carolina would turn them into points. And this is an extremely explosive Tar Heel team. Inside to Smith, the turnaround is good. And that's one way for Maryland to settle down this game. To get the ball inside to Joe Smith. Another double-double for Joe Smith. 10 points, 12 rebounds. Stackhouse from beyond the arc. shot by Stackhouse. North Carolina extremely impatient on the offensive end. Maryland works the perimeter now inside to Smith. Joe Smith looking at the officials asking for a foul. You rarely see Joe Smith do that. Jerry Stackhouse only one field goal in the last 17 and a half minutes. Wallace is good. We talked about North Carolina needing to get him some more shots. They haven't done it. 
through the first nine minutes of this second half. Wallace only seven shots on the night. He's made five of them. He's got to have the ball a little more down inside. Ten and a half minutes to go. Maryland by seven. This is going to be called on Yessa Kavishas. That's his first. That's almost automatic when you just put your shoulder down like that and lean in. Ten minutes and 18 seconds to go. We'll be back after this message from Budweiser. Atlantic Coast Conference, 10-18 to go in the game. With Carolina number one in the nation, Maryland ranked eighth. And Tim, we've got some subs in the game for each team. This is Pierce Landry. Landry's done a great job. He's a walk-on, former walk-on. Gets better all the time. He's given Dean some quality minutes. Jamon Williams, Donald Williams, particularly with Joe Smith out of the game at the moment. Ought to be looking for Wallace inside. Landry left alone for three. A great ball movement by the Tar Heels in that possession. It's a big three-point basket. Draws North Carolina back within four. Williams with some tough pressure against Simpkins. Shot clock at 15. Now Landry trying to guard Booth inside. That ought to be a mismatch. Simpkins from beyond. to go in there. comes in replacing him. Stackhouse only three of ten in this ball game. This is Kavari. And with the intensity of this basketball game, each coach has to get his starters, his regulars, some rest. So the way the guys on the bench play is extremely important. Great pass from Jesse Kavishas to Booth. <laughs> I don't know how good a pass it was. Booth did a nice job the basket though Tim I think the pass surprised Booth at first so he had to pin it to get it back Wallace is loose underneath Stackhouse wants to go with it Johnny Rhodes on the baseline 
Johnny Rhodes just dribbled the ball into trouble, Tim. Absolutely. Seven thirty-one to go from Cole. Yes, the Cavish just throws the lob right here. Keith Booth not quite close enough to get it into the basket, but what hands by Booth maneuvering around, getting it around Wallace for the basket. Well, ACC action continues Thursday night on the ACC Basketball Network. Georgia Tech has been on a roll, coming off a big win over the Maryland Terrapins against the Blue Devils of Duke. Duke still looking for his first conference win of the year. Inside the booth. Oh, what a booth. A little spin move. Got to get to He had the three. The crowd wanted him to take it. That's what he's known for. They love it here. Johnny Rhodes for three. He's got that three-point stroke working tonight, Tim. He's got four of them. Terrapins by ten. Wallace answers. He's now six for eight inside. Oh, he's a great player. Great player. Nine NBA scouts here. You see Wallace, Stackhouse, Joe Smith. Now they're also getting an eye full of Dwayne Simpkins and Johnny Rhodes. Inside to Smith. Booth falling away. Not a good shot by Keith Booth. Look, look at Johnny, Johnny Rose. Rose battle. And he bounced it off Stackhouse. What a play by Johnny Rose. Johnny Rose with 19 points and great defense. Rasheed Wallace doing a great job moving from Joe Smith to Keith Booth. Now watch Rhodes get the ball. He's just going to bounce it off Stackhouse out of bounds. What a play by Rhodes. Poor Stackhouse, he's got nowhere to go. Rhodes is sitting on, throws the ball at his head. This may be on Stackhouse. No, I don't think it's a five. Oh, the ball hit the uh, shot clock. Out of bounds, Carolina ball. Six-minute mark. Great first step by McGinnis. He gets his rebound. Nobody's guarding him now. McGinnis left alone, and he drills it for three. Dwayne Simpkins lost him, Tim, and never really got back to him. Nations Bank, a corporate partner of the 1996 Olympics. We'll have an Olympic trivia question for you in just a moment. This is Booth left alone. Olympics. Who was the first American president to open an Olympic Games in this country? We'll have the answer for you coming up a little bit later. Does that mean there was a president who opened an Olympic Games in another country? Dan has all the answers. <laughs> no, just all the questions. Stackhouse is a 70% free throw shooter. He's having a great season. Double well, figures almost every game. It's unusual to see him miss the free throw. Now, one of the things that you can see here with that blood rule, you don't have a lot of time for a lot of fancy work over there. That's quite a bandage on his chin. Carolina cuts the lead to six. Smith. Oh, what a move! That was so quick, he never gave Wallace a chance. Smith now with 12 points, 14 rebounds. Stackhouse to McGinnis. Beyond the arc. Yes. Here they come, Tim. It's only a five-point game. Under five minutes to play. This is going to be called on Wallace. 
That is three on Rashid. Joe Smith with a great pass. Look at the position that Joe Smith has underneath. He just refuses to be moved out of there, and Rashid Wallace bounces him once he leaves his feet. Donald Williams comes back into the ball game for North Carolina. He'll repl replace Pierce Landry. The five beta kappa. Booth, hip, yes. We talked at halftime about how Maryland had to defend the three. North Carolina's made a couple of threes here recently. Calabria has been very quiet this evening. McGinnis out to Calabria. This is for three. Rose battles. The key to that sequence once again is Dwayne Simpkins not allowing McGinnis to move to the back. Keith Booth throws it away. He's really struggled tonight. And Garrett Williams knows that Maryland can't get lazy with the basketball now. 3.42 to go. We'll be back after this message from Budweiser. You'll love this stuff. Play. Got to love Joe Smith if you're a Maryland fan. Look how quickly he gets the ball up to the basket. Rasheed Wallace just doesn't have time to recover. Get a look at it from another angle. Wallace unsure where Smith is going, and Joe just goes there too quickly. Terrapins by seven, 3.42 to go in the game. Wallace. Time becomes a factor now, three and a half to go. Well, if you're Maryland, you want to run some time off the clock, but you want to continue to attack. You don't want to lose your aggressiveness on offense. You'd sure like to find Joe Smith inside if you could. This is him. There's Joe. To Lucas. Eight on the shot clock. Terrapins have to go. Wasn't a very good offensive sequence for Maryland. The three-pointer gets us back to a four-point game. Donald Williams. Yes, they did. It is on Williams. That'll be five. That was really a tough break for North Carolina. Donald Williams with a very effective move in the lane. The ball just didn't go in the basket. Rasheed Wallace with a real nice tip. Donald Williams leaves the game with nine points, just three for 11 from the field. Nations Bank, trivia question, who was the first American president? And the answer is Ronald Reagan, 1984. So Williams goes out of the game. Pierce Landry checks in. Shaman Williams also in the game for Carolina. Dean Smith wanting Joe Smith trapped. That's an awful nice play. Just throw it up to Joe. North Carolina going to try to be very aggressive here. Terrapins by seven with 2.20 to go. Trying to upset the number one team in the nation. Shot clock now at 10 for Maryland. Last time the Turks didn't get a good trip. than he's given tonight. This is a very, very difficult shot with the shot clock running out. And as valuable as Dwayne Simpkins has been tonight, Keith Booth better be careful. 
He doesn't want to throw Dwayne Simpkins and injure him. Carolina was down 10 with five and a half to go against Wake. Won that game. If Simpkins makes this, he'll be down 10 with 2.04 to go. Dwayne with 18.6 assists. Almost automatic from the free throw line. He leads the ACC. Under two minutes to play. It's a 10-point game. McGinnis blocked by Simpkins. And Landry follows it. They call a foul before the bucket. No, they counted the basket, Tim. And one. Foul on him. Boy, the last thing you want to do right at the moment if you're the Maryland Terrapins is commit fouls. Particularly not in that situation. You don't want North Carolina obviously down looking for the three-point basket. Maryland did an excellent job defending the three as Lucas goes to the bench and Booth comes back in. Pierce Landry is an outstanding free throw shooter. 77% from the line. He's hit 17 of 22 this year. And the 5 beta captain will try to cut the lead. He does. 73-66 with 1.50 to go in the game. Plenty of time for North Carolina. Full court pressure. Three on one. Oh, that's a bad pass. Stack house. And Carolina calls timeout. We'll return after these messages from the Atlantic Coast Conference. March 1st, 1992. Maryland led by 22 points at halftime, but North Carolina came storming back and went ahead by a point on this three-point play by Hubert Davis. The Tar Heels, 80-79, with the clock under 10 seconds. The Terps working down low to the go-ahead basket. Evers Burns misses, but Walt Williams is there. And on the second tap, it falls. Maryland goes on to add a free throw and win it, 82-80. That was the last time the Terrapins have beaten North Carolina. And Tim, the Tar Heels have chopped five points off the lead in the last 30 seconds. The five-point game with 1.30 to go. North Carolina, Carolina with two timeouts left. Trapping all over the floor. This foul on Calabria. And that's the guy you want to foul. x re hip is only a 64% free throw shooter. He's hit only 61 of 95 free throws at the line. Hip, however, is two for two tonight, but Dean Smith, Bill Guthridge, Bill Ford, they know the percentages. x ray Hip is the guy they wanted to foul. Mario Lucas comes back in. You see Keith Booth goes to the Maryland bench. One and one. <laughs> 74, 68, Maryland. It's a seven-point lead. Hip four for four at the line. Man to man by Maryland. Stackhouse for three. Maryland ball with 105 to go. North Carolina really handicapped trying to make the three-point baskets late in the game with Donald Williams on the bench having fouled out earlier. Carolina has two timeouts left. They are over the limit, so any foul will be one and one. Possession arrow belongs to the Tar Heels. Booth is clobbered at the other end. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Foul is on Landry. That's a good hard foul by Landry. You got to make the guy go to the free throw line here, and Landry reaches in and tries to get the basketball. Good hard foul by Landry. No problem there. Now the question is, did they call a two-shot foul? Yes, they did. 
There's no question it was a two-shot foul. Sometimes on an excessively hard foul, you can call it as an intentional foul. Keith Booth, eight points, three rebounds. He's 0 for 1 at the line now this evening. Booth only a 67% free throw shooter. Six sixty-eight. One minute to play. Got to be looking for threes now. Calabria for three. Booth with the rebound. They can feel it in Cole Fieldhouse. It appears. If judging from the North Carolina bench expressions is any indication, North Carolina will have a very short stay in the number one spot. 54.8 seconds to go. Maryland trying to upset the number one team in the nation. This is Keith Booth. He averages 12 points against Carolina in his three career games. You know, he has not had the most outstanding offensive game tonight, but in the second half in particular, an outstanding defensive job by Keith Booth against Jerry Stackhouse. All five Maryland starters in double figures once again. It's a 10-point lead for Maryland. And Booth with 11 points this half. Gary Williams yelling no foul. Wallace for three. Oh, and Carolina takes a timeout. Rashid Wallace is special. Rashid Wallace hasn't really been able to get a lot of opportunities down inside tonight, so he takes it out and hits the three. He averages 18. He now has 15 tonight. It's 78-71 Maryland. ACC action has been brought to you by Nations Bank, by MCI, by Pizza Hut, by Food Lion, and by Ford Contour. See the situation. 78-71, 50 and a half seconds to play. Rasheed Wallace, you mentioned, hit the three-point basket. North Carolina, of course, looking for the three right now. That's a pretty good, pretty good range on that three. The announcers for this game selected and compensated by Raycon and Jefferson Pilot Sports. Any use of this broadcast without their express permission is prohibited. North Carolina with one timeout. Maryland with one. Carolina now with 10 team fouls. It'll be two shots every time. Maryland, five team fouls. So they've got fouls to give, a foul to give. And a possession error belongs to Carolina. For North Carolina, the strategy right now is very obvious. If you don't get the steal, you've got to get the foul right away. And then try to trade three for two. And if you're Maryland, you'd like to keep the ball in the hands of this guy right here. Simpkins, he picks up the foul. 
Simpkins is an 86% free throw shooter. He's made 26 of his last 27 free throws, and he'll be at the line. He averages 11 points, and tonight he's been on fire with 19. Maryland's defense was just outstanding. Dwayne Simpkins, I think, leading the way, cutting down on the penetration by Jeff McGinnis. But Jerry Stackhouse, only 4 for 14. Donald Williams, only 3 for 11 before fouling out. Carolina had a 14-point lead in the first half of this game. And Simpkins now has 20 points. At his career high against Georgia Tech with 24, he's going to close in on that tonight. left. Maryland trying to upset the number one team in the country. Williams scores. And in the hands of Simpkins again. To Rose. And Smith has it knocked out by Landry. What has Landry turned into a nice player for Dean Smith? Landry has quality minutes off the bench. Landry has given him some solid minutes. It's not going to be enough tonight, though. Maryland needs to do now is hold the ball run out the clock. Foul on Wallace. That'll be his fourth. Well, you talked about the Maryland backcourt and it came up big tonight. Rhodes with 21. Simpkins with 21. And Joe Smith goes to the line. Well, what a big game by Joe Smith. Only 12 points so far, but 16 rebounds. Florida State coming up this weekend. Then they have to travel to Wake Forest, travel to Cincinnati, and then it's back to the ACC against NC State and Clemson. But this is a huge win for the Maryland Terriers. Maryland 15 of 16 from the line. Landry off balance. He can't save it. Booth directing traffic down there. They can't do that. <laughs> that was a spot throw in. They're trying to throw the ball along the baseline. That ball was tipped out of bounds. You have to stay in the spot to throw it in. Nice try, though. <laughs> Here comes Rashid Wallace just throwing that one down. He had 15. Carolina's up 13, but the Terps go on an 18-2 run. They work it to Johnny Rhodes, who gets inside. Rhodes, 21. Maryland up one in the second half. Joe Smith, he had 14 points and 16 rebounds. Going to work on Wallace there. Maryland up by eight points, and then it's Dwayne Simpkins. It was the guards that did it for Maryland. Simpkins, the hoop and foul. Maryland up 10, and the celebration begins as they knock off top-ranked North Carolina, 86-73. The Terps snap North Carolina's nine-game win streak. Maryland did it with defense. They hold Jerry Stackhouse to just 13 points on four of 15 shooting. Now to East Lansing, number seven, Michigan. Following is an exclusive presentation of Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports.
There's word around the ACC that the road to the national championship goes by a different highway, and that a guy by the name of Joe Smith is driving in that direction. They're not ready to rename Maryland's Cole Fieldhouse just yet, but Smith and his band of Terrapins have electrified College Park. The mystique surrounding this 39-year-old building is alive and well. It has truly been home sweet home for the Terps, who have won all 13 games played at Cole this year. The biggest win of the year, and one of the biggest ever, was Tuesday night's upset of number one ranked North Carolina before a sea of red and white. Now, Florida State pays a visit to Maryland's house. The Seminoles are trying to complete an